Welcome back to another episode of the House Husband Diaries. As always, I am your host, Carter C. And today, I'm following up on a previous video about the Carolina Panthers and what they should be doing with their draft moving forward to set the Panthers up for Super Bowl success in the next four to five years. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about in this, or the main thing I wanted to talk about in this episode is, is the Panthers' past to try to learn from what went right and what went wrong in the 2011 in, in subsequent drafts. And so I guess to start with drafting Cam Newton in, 2000, in 2011, in my opinion, I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I wouldn't have done it. And, and even looking back on the Panthers going to the Super Bowl and, and Newton winning NFL MVP one year, I still wouldn't do it. Because now, and, and I don't have any inside information, but here's my thought. Carolina didn't have a first round draft pick the two years in, in 09 and 10, and then were, were terrible, and that's why they got the number one pick uh, and, and used it on, on Cam Newton. Now, what we knew going into that draft was that Andrew Luck was coming out the next year. Now, maybe Andrew Luck said, and I don't remember, maybe said, I just refused to play for the Carolina Panthers. And even, and even the next year, he wasn't going to play for the Carolina Panthers. I don't know. I don't remember that. I didn't look that up for this video. But regardless, you have that number one pick. You can do one of two things. You can trade down for draft capital, or you can build your defense. Theoretically, you could build an offensive, uh, your offensive line, but it just really depends on what your what your options are on the defensive side of the ball. Now, I probably, if I'm being honest with myself, I know this is this is uh, nine years ago, but I, I think I was probably leaning towards. I believe it was Marcel Darius was the number number two pick, and Von Miller was three. I think that's how that went. So, I mean, obviously, you can look back and you say Von Miller was the best defensive player. Um, you know, well, J.J. Watt. Uh, I believe that he was 2011 as well, but you're not going to know. I mean, those two guys, so you go Von Miller or, or Marcel Darius, I probably would have gone defensive tackle. And the reason being is because you start inside, in my opinion, if you're trying, if you're, if you're trying to, to build a contender, a Super Bowl champion, I would start on the inside. Left tackle, you know, guards on offensive line, and then defensive tackle before you move to ends. And, and the reason being is, is is those guys that can clog up the middle and force force runs outside, um, you know, can can get a push up the middle. They're just invaluable, and they're they're few and far between. So if you've got a good one, you might as well take it. And if if you know that your team isn't going to be good for the next two or three years, then you might as well put those those difference making, not touchdown difference making, but but just the the, the pieces that aren't sexy. Put those pieces together and put as many of those pieces as you can together before you put in a few key cogs in a wheel, right? And that way, when you put that last cog or two in, you have an unbelievably efficient and smooth running machine for a football team. So the reason that I say it's unpopular is obviously Newton, Cam Newton became the face of the Panthers, but it also appears to be in, in a, a poor decision or what, I, what would have been a poor decision, but I think it's because the Panthers got extremely lucky in the 2012 and 2013 drafts. Now, they followed up Cam Newton, which I, I wouldn't have taken Cam Newton. I would have taken Marcel Darius, I believe, or Von Miller. And, and then in 2012, I would have assumed that those defensive players weren't going to make a difference uh, in, in terms of the win-loss record. And so you'd still likely have the number one pick, and then you could go for Andrew Luck, or you could trade down if there was some like, I'm not going to go to the Panthers or something. you get you another stud defensive player, and then you'll be terrible again, and then you can, you can go for your franchise quarterback next year. I don't remember who the top quarterback was in the 20. 13 draft, but 2012, Andrew Luck. I think the 2013 draft was a was a poor draft. I don't remember. But anyway, you know, you, you look at uh, 
you you look at the twenty the uh, twenty twelve draft after after the Panthers took Newton number one, then the twenty twelve draft they picked number nine, and who did they get number nine at the number nine slot? Luke Keekley. I know he just retired, but when you're when you're drafting number nine, you are not expecting to get the defensive rookie of the year and in the following year the NFL's defensive player of the year. I mean that he was Luke Keekley was the third defense player to come off the board behind uh, cornerback uh, Claiborne and uh, and Barron the safety. I mean. That, that's outrageous. Like you, 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 you draft number one. You get a quarterback who ends up being a, a legit number one pick. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, he was a good. He ended up being better than I thought he was going to be in the pros. I have no problem with saying that, and no problem w- with how he ended up turning out as a player. I think for for a longer stretch, and and, and this is just you know, uh, Newton had a had a just a, a peak. And a short peak, I guess is what I should say. It was high, but it was, it was short from a duration standpoint. And anyway, you you go back to to, to drafting the, the offensive face of your franchise in 2011, and then the very next draft, you get to to you draft the the best defensive player in the draft falls in your lap at number nine. And that that's lucky. That's not just skill. So Andrew Luck. You know, theoretically, had a better career than Luke Keekley. I mean, maybe not. Um, you could say maybe. You know, who knows? And somebody else in that draft may may have a better career because it's longer. But but you 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 get in subsequent drafts in two consecutive drafts you get the offensive face of your franchise and the defensive face of your franchise. Boom boom. I mean that does that just that doesn't happen. I didn't go research and see how often that happens, but I can't imagine that it happens that much because so often draft picks don't don't work out. So it was really, really lucky that one and nine uh, turned out. And you could have flipped them. You could have had Von Miller or Darius, who were both solid, great, not as good, maybe as Keekly. I mean, Von Miller, maybe. I don't think Von Miller's ever been defensive player of the year. Not sure. Uh, I know J.J. Watts won it a, a number of times. But you can't have everybody, you know, you can't. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But then what's even more amazing to me, and I only looked at first-round draft picks for this. I didn't, I didn't look at, at the, the depth of all seven rounds. But then, so you've got 11, uh, Newton at 1. You've got 2012, Keekley at 9. And then 2013, Star Ludulele falls into the Panthers' lap. Now you may say, "Well, he didn't, you know, turn out to be, you know, whatever." He was a solid interior defensive lineman, and uh, he dropped to them at fourteen. He had a heart issue. I remember this really, uh, really well because at, at the time during leading up to the draft, and so what ended up happening is the Panthers had a top ten defensive tackle for a top 10 overall pick drop out of the top 10 because of potential health issues and, and land in their laps at 14. So I would have gone defensive tackle number one in 2011. And then I would have gone linebacker number two or number nine. I still would have gone Keekly. I mean, he, he fell in his lap. If, if not luck, you know, I mean, if, if you get number one pick again, maybe you trade down, but if you trade down, you get some defensive tackles. Maybe you get some offensive tackles. You get uh, maybe a tight end, somebody who uh, who can help block and receive. And then and then you get linebackers or, or cornerbacks. I mean, those are, those are uh, increasingly uh, increasingly important in today's NFL. But I, I wouldn't start with the quarterback because when you build up a team, drafting a quarterback first, you have to be able to protect that quarterback. And I don't know how many hits Cam Newton took. His first few years, but every you know, I mean, I know he ran a lot and he got a lot of hits that were outside the pocket. But you just have to look at that as and as something that shortened Andrew Luck's career. It also shortened Cam Newton's career. And so now in this in 2020 and looking to the future for the for the Panthers organization, I would 
highly recommend not drafting a quarterback this year in the first round or a quarterback next year. I would go for, like I said in that video, get your lines, get your offensive line, protect Christian McCaffrey, get your defensive line. You don't need to replace Luke Keekley. You know, get some get some cornerbacks, get some safeties, do something else, and look at this as a two or three year rebuild before you go in for your franchise quarterback. And obviously, we'll take stock next year to see if next year is when you get your your franchise quarterback, or maybe when you look at the when you look at the lay, lay of the land, you've got a number of pieces. Maybe you say, hey, I like you know I like quarterbacks coming out in in two years better than I like quarterbacks coming coming out next year. But at the end of the season, of next season, so this time next year, in tw early 2021, after you put in all those non-quarterback pieces, you'll have a year to evaluate and say, hey, how are those pieces? Do we still need to add in those other areas? Or do we need, do, you know, or do we think we're ready to, to take advantage of a franchise quarterback, you know, in, in the 2021 draft? And I think th those questions will become, you know, more clearly focused after a year. But this year, Man, just look at all the holes you've got. Don't try to replace Luke Keekley immediately. Start with the offensive line, and um, and maybe in the uh, in the 2020 through 2022 drafts, the Panthers will get as fortunate. Some may not say lucky, but you know as lucky or as fortunate as the Panthers got in their drafts in 11, their first round drafts from 11, 12, and 13. So this is all, just wanted to, to run through that. Um, if, if you're not a Panthers fan, you probably didn't watch this far. If you are a Panthers fan, let me know what you think. And even if you're not a Panthers fan and you're just an NFL fan, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on building a team and, uh, you know, through the draft, through free agency, however you want. Uh, but just wanted to take a look back and try to learn from that and let you know how I would build a team if they ever wanted to call me. And, uh, and, you know, and hire me for, for a GM position. So thanks so much for watching this episode of the House Husband Diaries. I will see you tomorrow.